Beggy Sue, my dad calls her. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Tom Straker, and this is Tasty Business. Today, we're going to be making pumpkin and ricotta agnolotti with a sage and hazelnut butter. It's great for this time of year, it's seasonal and it's delicious. And you should all be making this. Let's do it. First up, you need to get yourself a really nice pumpkin. This is a delicate pumpkin. It's vivid green skin and it's got a really nice dense orange flesh inside. We're just going to bake it whole in the oven and that's going to bring out all the sweetness and the depth of flavour. Going to rub a bit of oil on the outside, season it up. The skin's so delicious as well. We're not going to put it in the annulotti, but you can just eat the skin. It's really delicious. Bang it in the oven, 160. See you in an hour. For the pasta, we need 00 flour, which is a really fine, milled, soft wheat flour. 400 grams of that. Then we need eggs, lots of eggs. Nine egg yolks and one whole egg. In this one, the one whole egg. Then in this one, I'm going to crack nine eggs. Now you can just lift them up with your hands. Okay, you could make the pasta dough in the bowl, or we can make it on the side. I'm going to make it on the side today. What we can do is just make a nice well in the middle of the flour. You just pour the eggs in. And then we'll just add about 30 mils. You've got this volcano of egg yolks. You just want to start getting the flour incorporated into the yolks. You're just knocking a bit at a time, bring it together slowly. Eventually you get to the point where you can just start to move it with your hands. I'm not sure why people do it on the side, it's much easier to do it in a bowl. It looks way better though. Probably, probably want to knead it for like between five and ten minutes. Just make sure we get that really nice elasticity in the dough. Get everything off the bench. So you just want to knead it until you've got everything incorporated. And then you just keep going until we get a nice smooth dough. Should be feeling pretty pliable. And then what we can do is just wrap that in cling film. Rest for half an hour or so, just whilst we finish the filling. After an hour, the pumpkin should look like this. Let it cool. You can see all of the, the sugars and stuff that have come out of it, how sweet it is. Look at that, pumpkin caramel. This is how easy it is to peel. Then I'll just take it in half. And all we need to do now, is scoop out the seeds. Just use a fork, just mash it all up. You do this on the board or in the bowl. Lovely side for a Sunday roast. Ricotta. A good pinch of salt. Taste the pumpkin before you put it in. Also, if you're using something a bit more watery, like a butternut squash, just squeeze it out with a tea towel. Some nutmeg. Get those sort of autumnal spices coming on now. Works really well with the, uh, with the pumpkin. Parmesan. No, it's just a case of mixing it all together. Just gonna taste that. Need some black pepper. Needs a bit of salt. But we're getting there. Tastes pretty good. It's rich. Really very good. I only put it in a piping bag. Just keep your piping bag open. I'm gonna put half in. Now we can get on to rolling out the pasta. Fun part. So just make sure you've got a nice bit of clean space. God knows why I've got so many lemons. Set up the pasta machine. It's such a good at-home pasta machine. So the dough's been resting for like half an hour and you can see it's really nice and pliable now. And we're gonna have, because we've got a small machine, we're gonna have to work like a quarter of the dough at a time. Wrap these other bits up because you don't want them getting too dry. We wanna make sure we're not just smashing it through there without, any, without giving it, making it thin enough to go through it first. So we'll just start rolling it out. Okay, always good to have your machine on the thickest setting to start with. Just drop it down. 
this stage we can laminate the dough just to make sure we've got a nice strong dough to keep that filling all intact. Also just neatens it up so we've got a nice clean square. Probably wanting to go down to the second thickest. What we're gonna do is just pipe one long line just away from the center of the, of the sheet of pasta. And to go over, push the dough down, start pushing with your thumbs. Making sure you're nice and neat, come back down and just give a really good press to make sure that dough is nice and tight against the filling. Then what we're gonna do is pinch the annulotti, okay? Thumb and forefinger, you should pinch and push the filling so we're getting these really neat annulotti. And get these nice little bubbles. Run the cutter along the front. And then all you're doing is just push through. Push through. How satisfying is that? To store the pasta, you definitely need to put it on some fine semolina because obviously the filling's wet. It'll start to seep through the dough. The final parts of the garnish to go in the sauce are lovely, beautiful sage. And we're just gonna fry that in butter. It's gonna go crispy. It's gonna work wonderfully with the pumpkin. It's gonna be a beautiful garnish. It's gonna smell so aromatic and beautiful. The hazelnut's been roasted, and then they're just gonna be crushed. You can just use your thumb, really. Just crush them up like that. Different variations of size, and which gives you a good bit of texture. And if you've bashed them up, you just end up with lots of powder. Everyone says texture is one of the key components to a good dish, and they're not wrong. Just these little things. Hazelnuts are crushed. Put those in the bowl. Okay, so we've got the sage, hazelnuts. Now we can come over here and start cooking. Pans on, butter goes in. We just want to foam the butter. I'm actually going to put a touch of olive oil in there as well. Just whilst we crisp up these um, sage leaves. Let that butter melt. Okay, now the butter's foaming. Just add in a nice bit of sage. We cook it on a low heat so the sage is uh, losing its moisture whilst it's crisping up. Okay, and then we're going to get nice crispy sage, not burnt sage. It's very aromatic, it smells delicious. Make sure that water is nicely salted. Just whilst that sage is finishing cooking, we, we can drop the annulotti. I'm going to go 12 pieces. Annulotti are only going to take a couple of minutes. Sage is cooked. Lift that out. What we're left with is some beautiful burnt butter. See those little specks. Whilst the pasta finishes cooking, the lemon that we zested to go in the pumpkin, we're going to use that to finish the sauce. Add some water. And that's going to form the emulsion that we're going to finish the pasta in. Just taste this. Check the salt level. Salt, salt's pretty good in there. So that's the pasta basically done. I'm just going to season this sauce up with some lemon juice, a touch of black pepper. And now it's just a case of plating up. So. Might as well just get them all on full plate. Just go over, sprinkle these hazelnuts on there. A touch more lemon juice. Sage all over. Lemon zest. Finally, a bit of parmesan. Touch more pepper. Done. Pumpkin annulotti served with crispy sage, hazelnuts, lemon juice, lemon zest with a burnt butter emulsion. It's absolutely, you've done the best that you can. And it's gonna be banging. Should we try it? I think we should try it. Make sure you get lots of that butter. Mmm. Pasta's al dente. Pumpkin filling is super sweet and rich. I mean, do you want some of this? I don't think I'm gonna let you have any. Mmm. So good. Thanks for watching Tasty Business. I'm Tom Straker and we'll see you next week.
any leftovers, you can definitely uh, just, you know, get it to the top.